Number one, Ibble Dibble here. Hello, friends, and welcome to another installment of That Ain't It, Kid. That Ain't It, Kid. With Prince Harry and Tom Bradby on ITV. Number 31. Harry paradoxically keeps explaining away his bad behavior as the product of emotional development, implying that if only the rest of us were as mature and self-aware as him, we'd understand and support his nasty behavior. You know, I have put in a lot of work and effort into resolving my own trauma from many, many years ago, and I will continue to work on that. And and I think other people within my family could do with that support as well, because certainly from my perspective, um, you know, I've, I've learned a hell of a lot. Sometimes when we're exiting emotionally dangerous situations, we can't help but cause collateral damage to other people. But that doesn't mean we should not exit the situation. A classic example of this would be leaving an abusive household at a young age and feeling guilt about not being able to take younger siblings with you, knowing they will now bear the full brunt of parental abuse. This is not what's going on with Harry. Harry is not learning how to set and enforce boundaries in a positive way. Doing so sometimes involves disappointing people, but never necessitates purposefully mistreating people. Harry has disparaged and sabotaged his family again and again, and that is never acceptable. Number 32, it's okay for Harry to use coded language, but definitely not for the rest of us to do it. Again, in the book, I talk about uh, unconscious bias and being called a racist by the British press. Look how different that is now. <laughs> yeah. But I got called a racist when I was, you know, in my 20s by mistakes that I made. They were never intentional to harm anybody. But I recognized from that a level of unconscious bias within me that probably came from a combination of my upbringing, things I was exposed to, and things that I saw in the media. He's obviously using the term unconscious bias to code for racism, when in fact there are many unconscious biases, ageism, the halo effect, anchor bias, etc. Let me know if you'd be interested in me making a video about how Harry stacks up across the spectrum of unconscious biases, actual professionals with important roles in big, well-established institutions are trained to be aware of. This is yet another example of his hypocrisy and yet another shameless attempt to manipulate public perception. According to Harry, words like Compton, difficult, blackamore, and niggling constitute unacceptably coded language despicably intended to buffer their speaker from accusations of racism. But he's allowed to call everyone in the UK specifically his family, unconsciously biased with a literal wink. You know, I've, I've learned a hell of a lot. How convenient. Bringing me to point 33. If he truly understood the concept of unconscious biases and had honestly confronted his own head on, he would understand that he was, in fact, to a degree, implicitly racist. Because, like love, Racism is rather more a habit, an actualization, than a mere sentiment. Because I couldn't understand why am I being called a racist. Of course, clearly by what I did, it looked that way, but I knew that I wasn't a racist. But I made an active choice to ensure that the British press and the public knew that I wasn't, because that was a horrible place to be, a horrible thing to be called. But there was a level of unconscious bias that existed within me that needed to be confronted. He didn't see the problem with wearing that Nazi armband because he assumed no Jews were invited to the party. And if the odd Reuben or Rothschild happened to attend, their feelings didn't count as much as his good time. That's racist. When he called a fellow soldier our little packy friend, he was denigrating and belittling the guy's heritage. It's right there in the diminutive. Little. When I look at these examples, I'm not seeing unconscious bias. I'm seeing conscious, explicit racism. And the fact that he won't own up to it even years later, he won't use the word, makes me think one of two things has happened with him. Possibility number one, he's unbearably ashamed. 
Possibility number two, he still doesn't really think he was that wrong. I don't know. I'm not his therapist. What do you think? Is Harry making excuses for himself, to himself, or both? Is Harry knowingly seeking to manipulate commonly held unconscious biases, possibly thanks to the training of PR handlers? Or is he just throwing around the term like some kind of get out of jail free card for him and his family. Number 34, speaking of redefining words, Harry keeps redefining reconciliation. Do you still think there is any realistic chance for reconciliation that you have so clearly articulated that you want? 100%. I genuinely believe that. And I hope that when it gets to that stage, when there can be a constructive conversation, that again, I have tried, I've spent a lot of money through legal trying to find some form of reconciliation and it almost feels as though this status quo internally they feel as though it's better to keep us somehow as the villains the rest of us don't need an itemized invoice to apologize to our families the rest of us don't need to file lawsuits to reconcile with our families <laughs> I'm actually surprised he hasn't mentioned getting hit with an ironclad NDA by his family because that is certainly the only way I would ever speak to him again if I were a royal. Do you think they tried it and he demanded an outrageous payout in exchange for his silence, the equivalent of multiples of the proceeds of his Netflix, Spotify, and book deals? Do you think he's referencing the trademark disputes over Royal and Sussex? Number 35, Kanye West vibes. I genuinely believe, and I hope, that reconciliation between my family and us will have a ripple effect across the entire world. Maybe that's lofty, maybe that's naive, whatever, but I genuinely feel that. Or why don't you empower yourself and don't hmm. need them and do it yourself? How, Tway? You take a few steps back to go- You ain't got the answers, man. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. Kanye. I've been doing this more than you. Doing what you more ain't got. Come on, chill out. You bro. ain't got the Kanye, answers. Relax. You ain't got the bro, answers. I'm asking you You a ain't question. been doing the education. Bro. You ain't been doing the education. Kanye, calm down. You don't have the answers, though. Calm down. Because you're trying to give me advice about no, something. No, 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 you ain't, no, no. You ain't got the answers. You ain't spent $13 million of your own money trying to empower right. yourself. Number 36, as if that wasn't grandiose enough, Harry believes that the UK press is not complicit in creating quote-unquote, culture wars because they were too busy concentrating on alienating H&M from the royal family? It breaks my heart that the British tabloid press have so successfully, hang on, have so successfully managed to create this divide and this conflict at the same time as a culture war in the UK. So you talk about peace. Peace can happen when there's truth. And between my family and myself, it is up to us to reconcile. But the only way that can happen is by keeping that, the antagonist, out of it. On one hand, I want Tom to ask Harry what culture wars he's referring to, what conflicts exactly Harry believes deserve additional dedicated examination in the press. On the other hand, we all kind of know Harry doesn't know what a culture war is or to what extent the term describes real current phenomena relative to embodying propaganda. At any rate, Tom moves on. Number 37, Harry tells Tom why he's so very thankful for the never complain, never explain maxim in the royal family. Silence only allows the abuser to abuse, right? So I don't know how staying silent is ever going to make things better. Just kidding. Harry's projecting his own bad behavior onto the royal family again, claiming he simply can't stay silent in the face of abuse from people who haven't spoken to or about him in three years. 38, Harry tells Tom how he really feels. How much damage has been done to our love, our bond, and why? All because a dreadful mob of dweebs and crones and cut-rate criminals and clinically diagnosable sadists along Fleet Street feel the need to get their jollies and plump their profits and work out their personal issues by tormenting one very large, very ancient, very dysfunctional family. 
the press is an industry. They're not sadists. They're not working out their personal issues. They don't actually care about you. They just care about money. Get over yourself. Number 39, Harry simply doesn't see his behavior as a problem. He believes the problem is other people calling him out on his behavior. In a free country, you've got to have a free press. People in power, you, your family have got to be scrutinized. Someone's got to do it. We just got to rub along with them. That's not wrong, is it? That's not a crime, that attitude. No, the scrutiny, 100%, the press... The accepting of, you know, just you can't control it. That's what I mean. Well, my family have tried to control it for years, and they still try to control it. It's something they don't want to change because it benefits them, right? It doesn't always benefit them. No, it doesn't As always. you've of said, course, sometimes... Of course it's... it doesn't, yeah. Of but of your dad's attitude, for example, is, you know, he says in the book, darling boy, you can't deal with it. You know, don't read it if you don't... And it passes. Mm -hmm. It does pass. And I understand. And we've got. Does, does it pass? Well, has it passed? You, you. Okay. Well, let me ask. I left. I, I left the country for twelve for twelve months. It was relentless. That is not what happened. <laughs> In a globalized world, any English speaker and many non-English speakers can access and analyze the interviews you do anywhere. It's not 1670. Anything you say on this side of the pond, it'll probably cross the pond in less than an hour. No matter where you are, when you open your mouth and make scandalous accusations as a prince, you provoke press coverage. Moreover, when you're talking about the British royals and the British press and the British public, and you're a British prince, it would be a dereliction of duty for the British media not to cover it. And in the final revelation of tonight, number 40, Harry shares with us his true life's purpose. Is it to build world peace over a generation by uniting physically disabled and emotionally scarred veterans on either side of wars and the families that love them? Because although he buried it for a time, he'll always know in his heart that those 25 chess pieces were people. Is it to raise orphans with the food, medical care, education, enrichment, support system, and resources they deserve? Empowering those fated, like himself, into positions of familial estrangement to start healthy families and live happy, fulfilled lives? So again, one of the reasons why I am moving the, the mission of changing the media landscape within the UK from being personal to my life's work, a large part of that is down to the ongoing legal battles, right? Specifically with phone hacking mm. that I put in my claims over three years ago and I'm still waiting. So one might assume that a lot of this from their perspective is retaliation. I can't say I expected better from him at this point. Let's all repeat it with Tom. Oh God, give me the serenity to accept what I can't change, the courage to change what I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.